Brahmabandha of Upadhyay born Bhavani Sharanbandiyopadhyay Bengali Brahmabandhaba Upadhyaya the 1st of February 1861 to the 27th of October 1907 was a theologian journalist and Indian freedom fighter He was closed attached with Keshub Chandra Sen and classmate of Swami Vivekananda and close acquaintances of Rabindranath Tagore Topic Early life Brahmabandab Upadhyay was born as Bhavani Sharanbindiopadhyay in a Kulin Brahmin family. The term Kulin indicates to a cult in Brahmanical Hindu society of early era when a person was allowed to marry any number of wives. His grandfather was known to have married 56 wives. His father, Debi Sharanbindiopadhyay was a police officer of the British regime. Debicharan had three sons. The eldest was Hari Sharan, who became a doctor in Calcutta, the second was Parbati Sharan who practiced as a pleader, and the third was Bhavani Sharan. He was born in village Canyon in Hooghly district of undivided Bengal, presently in West Bengal. Bhavani Sharan lost his mother Radha Kumari when he was only one year of age and was raised by one of his grandmothers. Bhavani Sharan received his education in institutions such as Scottish Mission School, Hooghly Collegiate School, Metropolitan Institution now Vidyasagar College, and the General Assembly's Institution now Scottish Church College in Calcutta. In the General Assembly's institution, during 1880s, he was in the same class with Narendranath Dutta, who, at a later date, became Swami Vivekananda. He was a friend of Rabindranath Tagore. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Varied religious orientations. Topic: <inaudible> 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 Born as a Brahmin. Bhavani Sharan was hailed from a religious Hindu Brahmin family. At 13, he had undergone the Upanayana ceremony, the investiture of the sacred thread necessary to mark the coming of age of a Brahmin boy. Topic: <laughs> Converted to Brahmoism. While he was in the college, he was inclined to Brahmoism under the influence of Keshub Chandra Sen and Debendranath Tagore, father of Rabindranath Tagore. In 1881 he adopted Brahmoism and became a preacher. He went to Hyderabad town of the province of Sindh presently in Pakistan as a school teacher of a Brahmo school. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Converted to Christianity. When Keshub Chandra Sen died in the year 1884, Bhavani Sharan came back and slowly got inclined to Christianity. On February 1891, he was baptized a Christian by the Reverend Heaton of Bishop's College, an Anglican clergyman, and six months later, conditionally, in the Catholic Church of Karachi. It was a remarkable journey in his life exploring the theological beliefs and ideologies which did not end there being converted to Catholicism, though, during this phase he was successful to attract a large number of educated Bengali Hindu youth to be converted to Christianity. In 1894 Bhavani Sharan adopted this name, Brahmabandab Upadhyay, declaring himself as a Christian sannyasi monk. Latinized form of the Greek name Theophilos, Theophilos taken from Babani Sharan's baptized name Theophilus, which meant, friend of God, derived from Theos, Theos God, and Philos, Philos friend. Upadye is close to mean a teacher. In January 1894, Brahmabandab started editing Sophia, an apologetical journal, in Karachi. At one time he shifted his base to Jubalpur in central province now Madhya Pradesh. There he established Catholic Math, a hermitage for the converts. He also initiated the Concord Club, and initiated a religious journal titled Concord. When he shifted his base to Calcutta in 1900, Brahmabandab lived in a rented house at Beedon Street, Calcutta. Within a short distance was Bethune Row, where he had established his office to run his weekly magazine, Sophia. He published a series of articles through which he defended the Catholic Church and its manifestations. Brahmabandab claimed himself to be called as a Hindu Catholic, and wore saffron clothes, walked barefoot and used to wear an ebony cross around his neck. In 1898 he argued in an article titled, Are We Hindus? By birth we are Hindu and shall remain Hindu till death. 
We are Hindus so far as our physical and mental constitution is concerned, but in regard to our immortal souls we are Catholic. We are Hindu Catholic." Brahmabandhab envisioned as indigenous church in India embracing fundamental manifestation of Indian living. He is identified as one of the first Christians propagating sannyasi lifestyle in ashram. Brahmabandhab toured England and Europe during 1902 3. The Archbishop of Calcutta gave him a recommendation. By means of this statement, we declare Brahmabandha Theophilus Upadhyay, a Calcutta Brahmin, to be a Catholic of sound morals, burning with zeal for the conversion of his compatriots. Reparation and back to Hinduism In course of time Brahmabandhab's attachment to Hinduism became significant. During August 1907, two months before his untimely death, he declared to undergo prayaschidya expression of reparation in Hindu custom through a public ceremony for the purpose of readmission in the Hindu society, completing a full circle in his religious voyage throughout his life. Social activities While Brahmabandhab was in Brahmosamaj, he initiated a boys' school in Sindh in the year 1888. He also taught for some time in Union Academy, which was established 1887 as the Bengali Boys High School, founded in Shimla under the chairmanship of Sir N. R. I. Pendra Nath Sarkar. He brought out a monthly journal titled The Twentieth Century in association with Najendranath Gupta 1861-1940. Brahmabandhab and his disciple Anamananda started a school in Kolkata in 1901. Aim of the school was to teach and propagate the Vedic and Vedantic ideas of life along with modern education among the elite class of the society. Rabindranath Tagore was very much attracted to this idea of reviving the old Indian ideal of pedagogy, and offered them to shift their school to Santiniketan in his father's estate. This way Tagore's school at Shantaniketan was conceived, which later became known and famous as Viswavarati. There were three teachers, namely Reba Chand, Jagadananda Roy and Shibdan Vidyarnab, apart from Rabindranath and Brahmabandhab, and there were five students, namely, Rathindranath Tagore, Gorgobinda Gupta, Premkumar Gupta, Ashok Kumar Gupta and Sadir Chandra Nun. This collaboration could not continue for long and in 1902 Brahmabandhab and Anamananda left Shantanikatan. During 1902-1903 Brahmabandhab toured Europe. He lectured in Oxford and Cambridge universities and preached Vedantism. When he came back, he saw Bengal as a hot seat of political activities, and he too fervently plunged into the political doldrums. He was gradually coming to the conclusion that before India could become Catholic, she must be politically free. His journal, Sophia, soon became the strongest critique of the British imperialism. Topic. Patriotic activities When he was in the high school, Bhavani Sharan became inclined towards the Indian nationalist movement for freedom, and during his college education, he plunged into the freedom movement. His biographer, Julius Lipner, says that Brahmabandhab made a significant contribution to the shaping of the new India whose identity began to emerge from the first half of the 19th century. He was contemporary to and friend of the poet Rabindranath Tagore and Vivekananda. According to Lipner, Vivekananda lit the sacrificial flame or revolution, Brahmabandhab in fueling it, safeguarded and fanned the sacrifice. Brahmabandhab Upadhyay acted as editor of Sanya, till the last day of his life. After the movement of partition of Bengal in 1905, there was a boost in nationalist ideologies and several publications took active and fierce role in propagating them, including Sandhya. In March 1907, Sandhya elaborated its motto as, If death comes in the striving, the death will be converted to immortality. In May 1907, Sandhya reported, People are soundly thrashing a Ferengi whenever they are coming across one. And here whenever a Ferengi is seen the boys throw a brickbat at him. And thrashing of European soldiers are continuing. Further it added, Listen and you will hear the mother's trumpet are sounding. Mother's son do not tarry, but to get ready, go about from village to village and prepare the Indians for death. In September 1907 Sandhya wrote, God gives opportunities to all nations to, to sick free themselves from their stupor and strength to make the necessary beginning. 
Brahmabandab wrote in Sandhya on 26 October 1907, a day before his death, I will not got to the jail of the Ferengi to work as a prisoner. I had never been at any one's beck and call. I obeyed none. At the fag end of my old age they will send me to jail for law's sake, and I will work for nothing. Impossible. I won't go to jail, I have been called. <laughs> Arrest, trial and death On September 10, 1907, Brahmabandab was arrested and prosecuted on a charge of sedition. His articles were found to be inflammatory. Brahmabandab refused to defend himself in the court, and on September 23, 1907 a statement was submitted through his counsel to the court, Barrister Chittaranjan Das. I accept the entire responsibility of the publication, management and conduct of the newspaper Sandhya and I say that I am the writer of the article, Ekan Teke Gechi Pramer Dai which appeared in the Sandhya on 13 August 1907, being one of the articles forming the subject matter of this prosecution. But I do not want to take part in the trial, because I do not believe that, in carrying out my humble share of the God-appointed mission of Swaraj, I am in any way accountable to the alien people, who happen to rule over us and whose interest is, and necessarily be, in the way of our true national development. During the trial Brahmabandab reported pain his abdomen and was admitted to the Campbell Hospital of Calcutta. He had undergone hernia operation but could not overcome his sufferings and succumbed to death on 27 October 1907 under a precarious situation at the age of 46 only. A detailed account of the last moments of Brahmabandab Upadhyay and the funeral procession to the cremation ground can be found in Anamananda, The Blade, p. 173-178. The news of his death spread fast and crowds began to gather at the Campbell Hospital. Due to the increasing number of people and mounting excitement, hospital authorities decided to remove the body from the hospital premises. Upadi's body was carried from the hospital and was placed on the roadside under a tree while further preparations were made. His friends and relatives carried the body in a flower-decked bier towards the Sandhya office, occasionally stopping on the way. Nearly 5,000 people had gathered when the funeral process started from the Sandhya office at around 4 p.m. The procession, chanting Bande Mataram, proceeded to the cremation ground. When the body reached cremation ground, patriotic songs were sung and a number of poignant speeches were made. Since Upadhyay had no offspring, the funeral pyre was lit by his nephew, following Hindu custom. Songs continued to be sung and people came up to the pyre to pay homage till well into the night. Writing. Hundreds of articles in Bengali and English in short-lived journals and magazines of Bengal such as Sophia, Jyot, Sandhya, the 20th century, Swaraj, etc. The writings of Brahmabandab Upadhyay ed., by J. Lipner and G. Gispert Soch, 2 vols. Bangalore, 1991 and 2001. 